The Asheville Sound is coming to you via WPVM in Asheville 103.7 on your dial and globally on our website WPVMFM.org. Welcome to another edition of the Asheville Sound. I am your host, John Lauderer. Today we are joined by keyboardist, composer, and theme music master, B.J. Lederman. And I am here with Mr. B.J. Lederman. B.J., thanks for being here today. Hey, it is my pleasure. Yeah, and you're on the line uh, from Swannanoa, right? Yeah, or as, no, it's beautiful Swannanoa. <laughs> if you can, uh, you know, dodge the bears when you're walking up the road, yeah, it's fine. Uh huh. I, I saw a family yesterday. Actually, they're they're everywhere. Well, Gotta I, I hope keep them out of your trash. I saw some <laughs> something on Facebook today about the. Uh, well, way up north, it's four weeks until fat bear week. <laughs> you know, as the bears <laughs> fatten themselves up for hibernation. I'm, I'm, I'm looking around here hoping that these bears are getting fatter. <laughs> well, they know when it's trash day. They seem to be. Uh, they seem to be out and about. Yeah, that's our fault. You know, <laughs> our yeah, our neighbors. Are, anyway, we're good. At, we're good. Our house is good. But. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been living out there? Hmm. Well, I'll give you the short um, version of that. Um, last February 9th of last year, I met the woman who uh, is going to be my wife soon. I think. Anyway, oh. she. <laughs> yeah, Congrats. I got down. Let's see. I got down on one knee, and there's an expensive ring on her finger. So I think I'm. <laughs> I think, and, and I moved into her <laughs> to her house. Okay. So I think I think we got that covered. She's got three daughters, and two of them are also engaged, so we we're going to stand in line, you know, wait in line oh, for this pandemic crap to be over. And so Oh, you're going to wait till you can legally have a service? Right, wed and party together, you know. Right. Well, so uh, so she, she can legally, you know, uh, take part in my $9. Uh, <laughs> scroll away. Uh-huh. The dollar error. Huh? Yeah, but well, she's, uh, uh, she changed my life. At, at my age, you know, I, you you probably know my age, but um, yeah, we, we won't say it here. But you know, it's rare <laughs> that a guy uh, falls in love and the girl, uh, you know, loves me, especially, you know, with my rap sheet and all. It's it's, it's incredible. I think. Yeah, and is is she what brought you to our corner of the world, or were you here before? No, I was. I moved here about. See, my mother passed away at the end of two thousand ten. And um, is that correct? Yeah. Wow, I've been here. So it took a year or so, but I, I moved here. Um, in fact, I moved to Swannanoa first, and then I moved to Asheville, and then I moved to Black Mountain, and then I moved to Black Mountain, and then I moved to Asheville. <laughs> right. And uh, this is it. You know, I die here. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, um, hopefully soon. It's a good place to die and live. Too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was I was born and raised here, and uh, I, I popped out of town for about fifteen years, and I came back eventually. And I can't imagine anywhere else rather be. So, uh, you made a good choice. So, certainly now, you know, I tell people, look, um, Asheville is like the safest place for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's not going to be much of earthquakes going on here. If we if there's an minor attack, ones. if there's an attack, I don't think we're going to be targeted first. Yeah, you know, there's some ugly flags downtown, but not too many people. That's associated that's with everywhere. Them. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, well, we have we have tear gas floating around, just like pretty much every other mid mid to large sized town. But uh, hopefully, it'll come to uh, some sort of peaceful conclusion. Really, uh, I understand have, that if you breathe that in really well, it can get you quite high. <laughs> so, so where, where, where is this happening? <laughs> right, you're gonna, go, you're gonna jump in the front lines. I kid you. Man. I, yeah, I'm gonna be yeah. so far back. I'm gonna be in, you know, in, in well, I would say Atlanta, <laughs> but no, I got to go somewhere else. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I live in North Asheville, and when I hear something's going on downtown, I'm I'm staying far away. I'll leave that for the the young folks. Yep. Uh, and I, God bless off, them. Though. 
when I get off 40, I'll, I'll t- take a right instead of a left. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I met it up. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. All right, bro. Thank you well, for calling okay. me. I, I really um, in- enjoy being on the show. I thank you so much. Oh. Oh, thank you, and I appreciate you um, reaching out. You contacted WPVM, which I'm broadcast on on Wednesdays, and I uh, appreciate you listening. And, uh, I've, of course, I'm sure everybody's heard your name who listens to NPR. You're, you're the theme music composer to many of their t- um, programs. And uh, I was going back over your history of uh, theme music writing and uh and also jingle writing, and that's a really oh impressive roster you have, uh, and an interesting <laughs> timeline the way you kind of got into all this, you know, in your Norfolk, Virginia roots. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I saw that you had a background in um, local television news production, which is something I, I also did as well when I was uh, in, in school. I was a, a broadcast major, and did, uh, I did did, you, did my time in local TV. So did you run camera and stuff like that? Yeah, I did all the the production assistant, audio, prompter, camera, all that. You did yep. the, you did the same thing. Huh? It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, and I was probably using the same kind of technology you were because uh, when I was doing it, it was mid '90s, and we were still using a lot of the equipment from the '70s in this old studio I was in. So I don't think much has changed since the time you were doing it. Sh- Huge cameras on ro- rollers that you yep. push around. Oh, yeah, and, and the big and bar that you, you rotate right. to move them around. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. lord. And the uh, the crappy old teleprompter. You know, you just scroll with that knob, fast, slow. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I did. And yeah. b- one thing that I wish I hadn't done: the way they we we build the sets and set lights, and hmm. <laughs> we would rotate in order to set a light. One poor schmuck would sit in the host chair. Right. And, you know, while the guy's up on the ladder moving the mm. rock, and we had to look into the light, and when we felt the hot spot on our face, we said, that's it. So, <laughs> and that know, was about, a bright light. About a year and a half of that, and, and my glasses are like Coke bottles now. I see. <laughs> yeah, that was a hot studio. Was, this was before LED, so it was, uh, those were heat lamps, basically. Right, they were. And then yeah. all the years in, you know, playing in rock bands with, let's see, the drummer on my left and the vocal monitor on the floor on my right, Mm-hmm. Um, I can hardly hear you right now for all the <laughs> the ringing and the buzzing and the crickets. A little tinnitus up in there? Yeah, a little bit, sure. Yeah, and we also share a, a great love for the Beatles. I'm a, I'm definitely a fanatic, and uh, uh, I see that you are as well. Uh, I'm the kind of fanatic that has pretty much read every Beatles book written on the band, uh, almost every book ever written. And I, I don't know what else I need to know about the band, but I just have an insatiable appetite. Because it's such a great story, and such a, appealing characters that I just can't get enough of it. And the music's amazing, of course. Yeah, um, you know, like Paul said a while ago, as I slip into you know, m- m- John live a puddly and oh, thing. If it's John. all the same to you, Yoko, and um, <laughs> <laughs> Paul said, you know, it's just amazing that um, you know over the years, uh, you know, some music just sounds older and older, and and our music is, you know, with every iteration, the book comes out. You know, now I'm into George, I guess. You know, it, it just gets shinier and shinier. <laughs> right. <laughs> if it didn't, you know, that would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good George, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I, like to do, I like to do John. He's of the acerbic wit, you know. He yep. probably has something a little snarky to say, too. <laughs> oh, he always did. <laughs> he always did as a very complex man, you know, like you know, <laughs> like this Liederman guy. I hear he's got a good <laughs> album. People should go out and buy it and CD Baby, you know. John, I, I thought you were still dead. Well, yeah. You know, <laughs> <I'm dead. laughs> Ooh. No, he's not dead. He's he's in hiding. Oh he, God, you know, Imagine is still <laughs> my um. Yeah, no, it's my it's my prayer. You know, mm. I'm kind mm-hmm. of a. You know, and, uh, the show's not long enough for this. Maybe another episode, but you know, <laughs> he. I tell people I, he was. I think he meant for people to listen to that song, and take his lyrics. You know, just three simple verses, really specifically. Hmm. You know, not. He's not. They're not standing for anything. And and I really think that if we pulled back, I think we can't see the. Let's see the, the the trees for the forest. I think it's the other mm. way around, but I think that's what's happening now. So when we talk yeah. about countries, 
and we talk about religion, you know, to me these are things that, like John, th I think, thought divided us more than we needed to be because there's enough things that divide us already. Yeah. You know, sex, um, language, you know, geography, whatever. Uh, to me, we don't need, you know, another couple of institutions mm -hmm. that we choose to partake in and to lift up. I think we've got to pull back and see the planet Earth as it as the astronauts saw it, you know, when it rose over the moon, the moonrise Earth, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you don't you don't see these divisions when you look at it like that. And I think that's the only way we're gonna survive as a planet. I hear ya. Yeah, imagine it ended up being his manifesto in a lot of ways and it's very quick, you know, burst of inspiration. And you've probably seen the uh, documentary that was done about the making of that record, uh, oh, yeah. where he he's just kind of talking about the song he just wrote. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I just wrote the song. It's called Imagine. It's like yeah. imagine this, imagine he brings, that. He brings he brings no George deal. into the little room, you know, <laughs> to play yeah. it for him. Yeah. Oh, it's just so. Yeah, I'm, I'm more into. Yeah, I've got a lot of Beatle books, but I'm more into listening. I mean, we're lucky. Uh, mm. We Beatle maniacs are so lucky in that. Um, there's so you know, back in my day, we had to really scrounge to find the bootlegs mm -hmm. and the outtakes, yeah. and now you know with the deluxe editions and stuff, and and the uh, the uncompressed you know flak files mm -hmm. that I'm buying legally on the you know on my computer, <laughs> right. I mean Abbey Road, uncompressed mm -hmm. uh, I got 198 hertz whatever, is un is it's ungodly. Wonderful! It's like you're standing in the studio in the middle of them. It's yeah. got so much depth and the resolution. I don't know. I'm just now getting into high res audio. What I've been missing. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Are you an audiophile? Well, I, I don't have the gear that I used to mm -hmm. have. I used to be much more of an audiophile when you know I was into vinyl. When I had all my vinyl component, you know, my uh, analog components. Um, but now that when they release these things, they also release a 5.1 surround mix. Mm. And I guess it's time for me to dump a few thousand <laughs> bucks on a top of the line surround system so I can stand in the middle of that and hear, oh. you know, um, Sergeant Pepper. It, yeah. it even started back then when uh, Asia was re-released. And it, it mm. had a, um, Steely Dan put out a 5.1 thing mm -hmm. that I never heard. But I, it's just fascinating. I love it yeah. all. And I really mourn the fact that a lot of people, you know, most of the people, a grand percentage of the younger generations are content to listen to the stuff either with, you know, computer speakers. <laughs> can I say mm -hmm. that? Or, um, sure. you know, or low budget, you know, ear pods or right out of their, you know, iPhone speakers or iPad speakers. It just kills me. And yeah. sometimes I think to myself, why do I even bother trying to make my stuff sound great? You know, why bother? I should just, I sh really should do my next album on an iPhone. Just yeah, you might as well. Just the iPhone at the band, count to four, <laughs> and there you have it. Oh, but yeah. no one's going to listen to it because it's got to have a video to it too. Fine. Oh, of course. I'll yeah. point the camera at, um, I don't know, or I just might, you know, stripe in some porn scenes or something, you know, something <laughs> for the kids to look at. TNA. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, you have some fun uh, animated videos uh, accompanying some of your tunes that you released a few years ago. Uh, I, I just watched and uh, I really enjoyed those. Who uh, was responsible for uh, producing those? Uh, I'm going to say the name Howard Hoffman. He's my longtime okay. friend and partner when I lived in New York City. And mm -hmm. he actually got me into the big time, and I mean big time, ad business. Mm -hmm. uh, he had me working. We were partners. I was um, copywriter, and he was art director, creative director. And mm -hmm. we worked at Bozell and Gray Advertising and some of the um, you know, top five advertising agencies in the world. And we had a blast. Anyway, he's, uh, he went from New York to the West Coast, and he is an instructor among other things, at a fabulous uh, place called Exceptional Minds. And what Exceptional Minds does is teach um, young people with autism how to do animation on the computer. Mm. Wow. And th so 
he put together and we with his team and with the with the youngsters um, promo videos for each of the songs, and then one of the songs, "Walking Down the Street," yeah. which we can play a little bit of in a minute. Um, sure, it's got a full animated video uh, done by. Um, John Schnall. His business is called Quality Schnality. <laughs> well, I might have that backwards. Yeah. Yeah, Quality <laughs> Schnality. But That's good. John Schnall has got, he's got like a um, a Monty Python-esque mind. And I yeah. said, well, do whatever you want, John. You know, do whatever you want. And so mm. it, it's, it's a wild, crazy video. Yeah, and, uh, and if, well, it follows the lyrics pretty perfectly, too. It's, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So it's a hit. So if you want to play a little bit of it, there you go. Yeah, let's play it right now, right? Walking Down the Street by BJ Lederman. back here with bj lederman and uh that was a little taste of the tune that is accompanied by a really great animated video on youtube i'll have it a link here uh so check that out it's um, a little silly and and i should have given you a, a disclaimer at the front but yeah when people hear the first verse and they they hear me going to the top of a building because 
I've just been <laughs> jilted by my girlfriend and mm-hmm. jumping off in the first verse. <laughs> <laughs> they go, PJ, you can't do that. That's a long fall. Wait to the wait to the end of the song. Everything (laughs) turns out fine. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great theme too, and it's a a long enough fall where you can fit a couple more verses in there. And uh, I I like the uh, the Betty Boop uh, working into the animation there with the sexual harassment. (laughs) Yeah, that's just John, you know, doing his crazy stuff. He yeah, he did he did listen to the lyrics well. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, that's really well done. And Thank yeah, you. it did. It, it's just animation just fits the the lyrics perfectly, and like the part we say, I "Have my head held high," and your head pops off, and you're <laughs> holding it high. <laughs> yeah, I have to go back and watch that. I haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah, it's definitely worth a more than one watch. I like that a lot. And Thank then you. you have another tune about your dog, which is oh, uh, amazing on the she, short side. She passed. Oh but, yeah. Uh, yeah, she was she was great to me, mm-hmm. and yeah. So I did this uh, short song, you know, from. From Maisie's perspective, but I put put her voice way down low like Frank Zappa does in some yeah. of his songs. Uh-huh. That's funny too. So, The album has got a little bit of everything, you know, silly stuff, really serious stuff. Um, in fact, there's one song called Pray that I did, uh, you know, years and years ago wh- when I was watching the beginning of the Gulf War start on time, mm. like 8 p.m. Yeah. At, with complete with graphic, you know, CNN with graphics and jingle <laughs> yeah. theme music. And I was yeah. stunned and appalled. And I just walked from the living room back to the studio and in about 10 minutes wrote this song pray. Asheville Sound is coming to you via WPVM in Asheville 103.7 on your dial and globally on our website WPVMFM.org. Yeah, Desert Storm. I, I remember that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember laying in bed listening to uh, Papa Bush speak about naked aggression and it was like, it was so surreal. And, yep. uh, yeah, that was, that was a made for TV war. 
Yep. <laughs> and yep. it lasted all of what, two, three weeks? Well, it was a precursor to, you know, wars that. The never ending war, right? Yeah, right. It's just yeah. crazy. It's mm -hmm. crazy. It is mad, mad times. And uh, what what is it like? Because um, I know you uh, were uh, of age in the late 60s when, when America was in turmoil, and now we're kind of here again. What, what's it like seeing us uh, repeat history? I was in this age group sort of in between. You know, I was too young to go to Woodstock. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would have to ask my parents and then... <laughs> Have them <laughs> drive me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I was politically aware when I was going to um, Virginia Tech. That was my first school, first college, and um, I got a little. You know, the most you could do back then to show that you were um, a political activist was, you know, mainly write letters to the editor. So I did that all the time. Mm -hmm. But then I started. You know, Nixon was in, and I started. I had this little stamp, rubber stamp thing made that I put on all my outgoing mail, you know, impeach Nixon. <laughs> yeah. And I, our dorm had, uh, you know, people put sheets from their bed, hung them out the window with, you know, spray paint on them, you know, impeach Nixon. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, so I'm, I don't think I was on Nixon's enemies list, but I, I bet I had an FBI <laughs> file. <laughs> you know, because NSA so, had your number. Yeah, because I, I was, I had already done. No, I, let's see, what was it, 1978 is when I wrote Morning Edition for NPR. And it, it's, it aired in November of 1979. So this was all before that. But if I'd done that, you know, and even now, I mean, I'm quite vocal and verbal on social media. And um, every time I post something that I know is a bit over the top, either within the hour or the next morning, you know, I, I think, oh my God, NPR is going <laughs> to. I'm embarrassing <laughs> NPR. I've lived my whole life trying not to embarrass NPR, and yet uh -huh. I do it every day. But, you know, and then I scrub it, <laughs> I delete st stuff left and right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, NPR, uh, I'm sure their listenership is, uh, you know, more of the left leaning ilk anyway, even though well, yeah. they, I, they try to stay, you know, obviously non biased, but, you know. E even though you're probably right about their listenership. Um, mm -hmm. The, the the trick here is that I am not, nor have I ever been, I am not, nor have I ever been, Your Honor, um, an employee of NPR. Mm, you know, I'm right. a contract worker. Mm -hmm. And so they can't tell, you know, the rules that they've got laid out for their employees don't apply to me. But still, you know, I, I should know better. But at the same <laughs> time, I mean, some of these songs on the album, no doubt, you don't have to... Uh, look very deeply to see mm -hmm. that they express my political views. Yeah. Um, but I really would like to do much, much more. And there's somewhat of a revolutionary in me, though not a violent one. Mm -hmm. And um, I, th I don't know. I think my next album, I was talking with uh, Melissa uh, today about it. And I said, I think I'm going to title it Bitch and Moan. And each of the songs <laughs> is going to be about a different thing that pisses me off. <laughs> That's she, an endless well, I'm sure, right? Just for the record, she loved the idea. So if mm -hmm. it does come out, you know. For, for, I'd love to hear it. Because I, I first said, she was looking at a video of a band. You know, the video was shot and posted on Facebook, and it was in portrait mode, you know, straight up and down. And ever yeah. since that started happening, you know, I, I wanted to blow my brains out because... <laughs> You know, the, the younger generation, I, I don't want to denigrate them by saying kids, because when, when you get right down to it, at the end of the day, they know what they want. They mm. know what they like. Who the hell is it for me, you know, to say what's what? But then I go, you know, if you turn the phone sideways, the whole <laughs> image would fit on a large screen when you look at it on your computer without having to put those silly bars left and right <laughs> with the, you know, the, the out of focus uh, parts. And you'd be able to get all four members of the freaking band in the same <laughs> the same image, yeah, same window. That's a that's and a I production going, ah! assistant's pet peeve. You know, set my <laughs> hair on fire and go running down the road. <laughs> yeah, if you've worked in broadcasts, then that, that's yeah. a pet peeve, no doubt. <laughs> now, then again, you know, if it's one person and you're doing a handheld, you know, you know uh, 
interview or something with yourself, you know, yeah. with your arm, you know, spread out, and yeah. then it's good, you know, because it, your face and your body fill the screen. But I, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm a vid video editor also, like you probably are, and like everybody yeah. is. Hmm. Now I want to get back to your record, BJ. Uh, what uh, what other tunes do you want to um, show on the, our podcast here? Uh, just a couple, but first let me quickly say the backup band is Randall Bramlett Band, um, mm. friends of mine uh, for a little while, and then um, Barbie Angel, who's Asheville fame. Uh, oh. She's been my assistant on and off, and during one of the Leaf Festivals, uh, she took me backstage and introduced me to Bella Fleck. Oh, yeah. And somehow arranged for uh, Bella to listen to a few of my very sh I had some short instrumentals that I'd done a decade or two before. I'm yeah. talking 20 seconds, you know, 45 seconds. And I asked him, would you, you know, like to listen to some of these and be on the album? He said, sure, send them to me. So he invited me to Nashville to his home studio. And, mm -hmm. you know, basically he asked me to produce him. Wow. <laughs> and I was a little taken aback and then I took a deep breath and said oh yeah I can do this and mm -hmm. he had the parts so three of the cuts are, are, are Bella's and since they're sure so, so short let's play one yeah now uh, it's called Bella BJ1 okay Bella BJ1 <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. And that was Bella and BJ. And uh, now, was this the um, Lee Festival where he performed with his wife, Abigail? Yes, it was. Yeah, I was there. Uh, I haven't been to many Leafs, but I was lucky enough to go to that one. And that was I, that was amazing, wasn't it? I had to catch that one because I'm a big fan, and uh, uh, I've been a long time fan of Bela. You know, back to the Flecktone days, you know, and yep. uh, I've seen the Flecktones perform many times, and always just been just aghast at their musicianship. And and Bela, you know, everything he does from that to his classical record, which is amazing, you know, to his African Throw Down Your Heart, you know, record, which is amazing. And yep. there's so many dimensions to that man and uh, such a brilliant. And he composed uh, a concerto for uh, banjo and orchestra, which I got to see him perform in Brevard a couple of years ago uh, at the oh, Music I Center. That. I'm sorry I missed that. But on yeah. top of all that, he's got a huge heart. Yeah. I mean, he didn't. He knew me from my NPR connection, but we'd never met. You know, we weren't friends, whatever. And he just went for it, you know, and I I love him for it. It's, it's great. It's one of the things that makes the album special. Um, I'll just mention one other one before we go out of here, and you can go out on the last cut of the album. Mm -hmm. But it will be fun if you just play 10 or 20 seconds of uh, track eight, which is my mom's phone messages. <laughs> when she died, I had a ton of her messages on my um, mm -hmm. voicemail, and I, you know, imported them to my computer. And when I played them for the producer, by the way, the producer of the album is Eric Serafin. He moved here from L.A. where he uh, had pr produced and mixed a, a lot of, um, I mean, heavy-hitting bands. Mm -hmm. And he was, he had some time when he first came here. So we got together, and he heard these messages, and he said, BJ, we got to do, we got to do this. We got to put this to music. <laughs> so uh, the album was recorded at um, Echo Mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lovely experience. And... Um, uh, engineered by uh, Julian Dreyer, who mm -hmm. I adore. And uh, yeah. so the band just struck up this jazz groove, and Eric edited in these messages from me dead mom. So here is oh. mom's phone messages. PJ, don't buy or eat romaine lettuce. It's so like coli. Regular lettuce is okay, but not not romaine. This is this is your once a day love, loving mother calling you. Bye, darling.
is really hot. I'm trying to help you, dear. Just trying to help you. Bye-bye. And another thing, put all your clothes in the trunk. Your clothes and your sheets. Pillowcases and everything in the trunk. Get rid of your pillows. Buy new pillows. Dry the washing thing and a new mattress. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, Absolutely. I'm going to, you know, hide behind a desk or under my bed and, and listen to it <laughs> when, when it airs. But um, the last real song on the album is a gospel song. This good mm. Jewish boy writes a gospel song. Mm -hmm. And I tried to sing it. I sang it on the demo. And I couldn't bring that church to it. You know? Take him to church. Yeah. So um, Jim Arundel is the lead singer on this and he knocks it out of the park and i had a ton of uh rough a ton i had five background vocalists including me and we just uh, overdubbed ourselves four or five times and it's really my message it's my imagine but done in you know more upbeat and a uh, mm. little fun way so um we'll see you on the radio thanks again and, hey, thanks bj uh, here's praise one another See you soon. Uh, all right, see ya. That does it for another edition of the Asheville Sound. I want to thank BJ for joining me today. Please check out his album, BJ, which is available on CD Baby and for order on his website. And until we meet again, y'all take care. about